Hello, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Today I want to talk about how to declutter sentimental items and some tips and tricks I use to make that process a lot easier. If you're new here, my name is Shannon. I talk about decluttering, minimalism, and simple living, and you can hit the subscribe button to join my channel. Decluttering sentimental items can be really difficult because they're tied to memories and maybe a family member or a friend gave you that item or maybe the item signals a memory that you don't want to forget. But at the same time, you might not want to still have that item, but you want to keep the memory. So I feel that's why it is extremely hard to get rid of these sentimental items, even though in a lot of cases, we don't really want them or we don't want to store them. And it turns out there is a real reason why we do want to keep these items. One of those reasons is called the endowment effect. I have all of this written out in detail on a blog post that I will link down below, but essentially that endowment effect is that we want to hold on to items that we've already had more than a new item. So a new item means literally nothing to us, but if we've had something for even five minutes or a week, we feel as though we want to hold on to that item. They actually did a study on this where they gave a group of people a coffee mug and they gave another group of people a chocolate bar and these people had these items for a very short time, but when they were asked if they wanted to switch the coffee mug for the chocolate bar, most people, or vice versa, most of the people said no because they had already had that first item, they felt they owned it, they had already put their claim on it, and they didn't want to let it go, which just proves this whole theory that when we hold on to something and we've had something for a while, it's even harder for us to get rid of it. What's also interesting is the longer you've had an item, the more attached you become to it. So just because you've had it for five minutes, you might not feel as attached, but let's just say you had it from when you were a kid, you almost feel as though you are losing your identity when you get rid of that item. So that just kind of explains why we feel that attachment and that it is totally natural. The psychology of stuff and things has said that we feel like all of our stuff becomes who we are a lot of the time, and normally it's a lot easier to get rid of things and declutter things when you are ready for a major change. So that explains exactly why I decided to declutter. I had had kids, which was a major change for me, and they started to grow up, so they went from the baby stage to one years old, two years old, and that's when I thought, you know what, I have to get this clutter situation under control. And that's when I decided to change everything, declutter stuff, and become more minimal. So I personally do feel it is much easier to declutter when you are ready for that major change and you're more willing to get rid of those sentimental items because you really want to overhaul your whole life and simplify and make things much easier on yourself and the amount of uh, storage facilities that you need to have. Some simple things I do when I go to declutter sentimental items. One thing is I go through and I remember all the memories that are associated with that item and I try to really separate those memories from the item and that makes it much easier to let it go. Also know that decluttering sentimental items does not have to be erased, you can take your time. And I try to remember that the sentimental items have been collected over my whole entire lifetime and it might take a while to let them go as well. A few years ago, I finally felt ready to go through all of my sentimental items from my childhood, including items from high school and college that were all stored in my old bedroom at my parents' house. It was shocking to see how much stuff I had saved through the years. This is why, um, you know, if people ever question, why are you becoming more minimal? Why are you not saving things? This is why, because after 10, 20, I'm 35 now, or I'm gonna be 35 this month, um, I just don't need this stuff. And 
I really question where it even came from. Oh look, there's stuff in there too. After I decluttered every aspect of my life, this is when I finally decided I was ready to start decluttering these sentimental items. I feel decluttering is like a muscle and the more I do it, the easier it becomes. And that's why I decided to wait to declutter my sentimental items last after I had decluttered everything else. If you are on a decluttering journey and you need some direction or extra help getting through the decluttering process, I have created a detailed ebook that goes into the exact process I used to declutter my entire life, our home, and all of my sentimental items, and including all of the kids' items that needed to be decluttered. So I've linked that in the description box below so you can find out more information in case you're interested. After I was done decluttering this day, all of these items ended up going. I just realized there was no reason for me to store these either in my garage, at my parents' house. It took up valuable space and I honestly never wanted to have to go through these items again. They weren't bringing me joy, so I thought they just needed to go. Here is a sentimental item that my mom gave us when either we got married or maybe our first anniversary, I forget. But our cake toppers were looked just like this and she found this and gave it to us. And this is a piece of sentimental clutter, I guess you could say, if, if it's not your uh, sentimental item. But I decided to use it as decor. So I have it sitting on my shelf up here and every time I look at it, I remember my mom, I remember our wedding. And for me, that's great because all those memories are brought into my mind constantly rather than hidden in a box. So I always like to decorate with my sentimental things, use them as much as I can rather than hide them away. And that's another thing you can do is pick out the things that still really mean something to you and use them and then get rid of the rest. Sometimes when it's really hard to get rid of a sentimental item but I know I don't want it, I will lay things out and take a picture of it. That way I have the memory when I see those items, if I need to be triggered of the memory by the item and I don't have to worry about losing that memory because I have the photo. I do try to only take one or two photos I don't really want to add even more clutter to my computer and life by taking a whole bunch of photos. And odds are that I'm probably not going to look at those photos, but I do have them just as a backup. One thing I did that really helped with getting rid of my wedding dress, which I would consider sentimental clutter or something that I'll never use again that was sentimental, but I got rid of it in my mind. So I imagined into the future, uh, living without the dress, it's gone, never to be seen again. And how did I feel in my mind when I, it was gone? I felt fine. I could go on with my life. I knew it would never fit again. I knew I would never have anything to ever wear it to again. No event would ever require a wedding dress. And if it did, I'd probably want a different kind anyways. So I could let that go. And I just think thinking in the future of yourself and how you will feel can sometimes help you with getting rid of those items. And by all means, if your sentimental items are bringing you happiness, then keep them. I don't think you should declutter your sentimental items just to get rid of them. If you really like them and you want to see them all the time, they bring back great memories, then keep them. These tips are for the people that are looking for ways to let go of those extra items because they don't want them anymore. Thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure you check out my other channel. I'll link it down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.